Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be discussing how polyunsaturated fatty acids can contribute to insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a condition where the cells of the body are no longer efficiently or properly communicating with the hormone insulin. And the primary job of insulin, which is a hormone secreted by the pancreas, is to grab glucose out of the bloodstream and send it into the cell to be phosphorylated or oxidized into energy. And this, of course, is going to cause many health issues. The most fundamental being that the cell is going to be deprived of energy. So if the cell is not capable of receiving the signals from insulin and getting that glucose into the cell, it can't produce ATP and energy, and you're going to run into a chronic cellular energy deficiency, which is going to set the groundwork for pretty much every degenerative disease you can think of. But in addition to that, when the cells are not getting that message from the insulin produced by the pancreas, the pancreas responds by secreting more insulin to try to get the message through. However, this creates an energy burden or a stress on the pancreas, causing the pancreas to have to produce more beta cells. And over time, not only can the pancreas become fatigued and start producing less insulin and less beta cells, but because the glucose in the blood is not being escorted out of the blood by the insulin into the cell, this is not only causing energy issues for the cell, but it can cause chronic elevations of the blood glucose levels and contribute to pretty much every symptom associated with type 2 diabetes. For example, when somebody with insulin resistance consumes glucose, not only is that glucose not properly oxidized and turned into energy, which stresses the cell energetically, but also that unused glucose just like any other substrate that isn't properly metabolized, is often stored as fat tissue or adipose tissue, which could lead to not just obesity and fat gain, but also the development of conditions like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, two conditions that are highly associated with people with insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes. Now, in terms of what causes insulin resistance, there are a lot of contributing factors. If you look at the mainstream point of view, they're going to tell you that genetics causes it, or the accumulation of body fat lack of sleep, too little exercise, or even smoking. And while all these things might contribute in some way or another, and they're definitely worth noting and diving into, one of the greatest contributing factors that is not so commonly talked about is the consumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids. Normally, in terms of diet, sugar is often blamed as the cause for type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, and other sugar handling issues. And I guess, in theory, it makes sense if insulin resistance is associated with an elevation of glucose in the blood, it would seem practical that you would not want to consume more sugar on top of that. However, this is short-sighted to say the least and overlooks the underlying cause for why glucose is accumulated in the blood in the first place. So we have to ask the question, well, what's causing the cell to be incapable of receiving the signals from insulin and getting that sugar into the cell? So it's not the sugar in of itself, but there's something else causing the cell to be incapable of taking in consuming that glucose and oxidizing it. And of the many contributing factors to this, one of the least commonly talked about is the roles or mechanisms of the free fatty acids. So if we take a look at this study here as an example of the mechanisms of free fatty acid induced insulin resistance, it was found that a lipid infusion caused a 40% reduction of oxidative glucose metabolism starting during the third hour of the lipid infusion. Additionally, it was found that rates of muscle glycogen synthesis, although were similar during the first three hours, of the lipid infusion were thereafter decreased approximately by 50%. These results demonstrated that free fatty acids can induce insulin resistance in humans by the initial inhibition of glucose transport and phosphorylation, which is then followed by an approximate 50% reduction in both the rate of muscle glycogen synthesis and glucose oxidation. Now, if we take a look at another study, there's some insight as to how the free fatty acids directly impair glucose metabolism. At least according to this study, free fatty acid induced heptic insulin resistance is associated with an increased activation of the pro-inflammatory nuclear factor kappa beta and an increased expression of inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin-1 beta, and other monocytes that are actually known to damage the insulin receptors. So in conclusion, free circulating fatty acids, which are a key biomarker of somebody who is diabetic and has insulin resistance, is known to impair glucose metabolism, 
the body's ability to store glucose into the muscle tissue as glycogen, and it is postulated that it has these effects by actually evoking an inflammatory response in the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines that actually damage the receptor sites on the cell to insulin. So in the most refined terms as possible, free circulating fatty acids can actually evoke inflammation and damage the cell to the point of not being able to properly oxidize glucose, and that's what results in insulin resistance and the various symptoms associated with type 2 diabetes. Now this is very helpful information because it just confirms the toxic nature of the polyunsaturated fatty acid rich food. Foods. Now this is very important to understand because a lot of the times the typical protocol for somebody who's diabetic or has insulin issues is to try to avoid sugar. Now they might experience some relief because a lot of the sugary foods that people think of when they hear the word sugar are foods that are not just specific to high sugar content. For example, most people think of sugar and they think of donuts, cookies, pastries, baked goods, other confectionaries that yes have a higher amount of sugar, but they also have a high amount of gut irritating, inflammatory substances, grains, difficult to digest fibers, added chemicals, synthetic stabilizers and gums, but also usually a high amount of the polyunsaturated fatty acids and other bad fats, which would elevate the free fatty acids in the body. So in terms of treating insulin resistance and diabetes from a dietary perspective, I think more than avoiding the consumption of sugar, because keep in mind, cane sugar, maple syrup, raw honey, even fruit or fructose is very different than consuming, let's say a donut or a piece of cake. So I think more than trying to avoid sugar, if anything, sugar would have protective effects, which I talk about more in videos like this, but the real food you're gonna to wanna to avoid are those rich in the polyunsaturated fatty acids that would increase the circulation of free fatty acids in the blood, damage the pancreas receptors in the cell, and even damage the pancreas to a degree, and impairing this ability to produce beta cells. Now keep in mind, this is just one of the major contributing factors to insulin resistance and diabetes. There are other contributing factors, everything from the elevation of cortisol and stress to the influence of the Randall cycle. But if you're looking at one simple dietary change to make for treating these sugar issues naturally, instead of avoiding sugar, I would instead put the focus on the polyunsaturated fatty acids and avoid the consumption of those foods and oils instead. Now this is something we talk about in greater detail in our healthy weight loss course. So if you wanna learn more on how to heal the metabolism from a natural point of view, one that focuses on nutrition, diet and herbs and lifestyle factors, definitely be sure to check out that course for more information. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. That's all I really wanted to share here in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And for those of you interested in learning more beyond this YouTube channel, don't forget to check out our blog, Online Tonic Herb Shop and Online Wellness Academy, all which you can find in the description box below.